When it comes to network television, you'd have better luck with the lottery than with predicting what shows will make it to the end of their run. Every year, a new slate of shows crop up, only for a quarter of them to disappear by mid-season. As a fan, this is obviously quite distressing, both because things vanishing into thin air is quite scary, and also as buying into a premise and having the rug yanked out from under you is just not good. Firefly fans know this keen sting well, but not everyone will get the satisfaction of a feature film revival, so... Ugh. And already we have seen some shows fall by the wayside. Sunnyside was the very first show to be pulled during the 2019-2020 season after airing only four episodes. And there are a number of other decent shows in danger of losing their time slot in 2020. So let's take a look at what could be biting the dust. I am the small screen adaptation of Ash from What Culture, and these are 10 TV shows in serious danger of cancellation in 2020. 10. Charmed Film studios have been churning out successful nostalgic reboots for nearly a decade, and television studios realise that they can do exactly the same thing. Despite being absolutely ridiculous, nearly incomprehensible, and riddled with continuity issues, the original Charmed proved to be quite a success. Their fervent fanbase kept the Halliwell Coven on the air for eight seasons, which made it ripe for the remake picking. Unfortunately, this new incarnation of the show has not been drawing the crowds like they had hoped. With ratings as low as or lower than American Housewife, which we'll get to, the Charmed reboot doesn't seem long for this world. Though this show is being hailed as progressive and feminist, its lovely ideals are not enough to keep their clunky execution on the air. 9. Deputy A liberal fantasy meets Clint Eastwood's wet dream, Deputy is a fun mid-season replacement on the Fox network starring Stephen Dorff as the titular deputy. Dorff was the perfect casting choice for a down-home deputy sergeant who is thrust into the limelight when he assumes the role of acting sheriff. His character, Bill Hollister, is a righteous man with big ideas, who is determined to make LA County a much better place. The show is unintentionally hilarious and an entertaining watch. Dorff drops David Caruso like one-liners, and the music mimics the popular CSI Miami show as well. However, this program seems to be targeting an older demographic, and some of the ideals and the way that it's executed just doesn't seem to fit with what they would want from this sort of television show. Because of its over-the-top expository speeches and other such clunk, it doesn't appear that the Fox gem deputy is going to be sticking around for much longer. Take in an episode or two whilst you can. 8. Emergence This supernatural mystery series premiered in the fall to respectable ratings. The strong start was most likely due in part to the heavy-handed promotion throughout the summer during ABC's most popular shows, like Bachelor in Paradise. The series centers around police chief Joe Evans, who discovers a young amnesiac at the scene of a plane crash. Joe is played by Alison Tolman, who previously starred in Downward Dog, an extremely short-lived series. Tolman's work is often solid, and has proven to be a grounding force in this otherworldly show. The central mystery surrounds Piper, the only survivor of a horrible plane crash. The girl has no clue to her past or her identity. As the series progresses, the mystery of her origins slowly unravels. As exciting as the premise may be, and as good as the reviews have been though, the show has slowly lost viewers over the course of its first season. If the pattern continues, it seems likely fewer people will show up in the fall for season two. 7. Bluff City Law Bluff City Law is a legal drama set at a civil rights law firm in Memphis, Tennessee. The show successfully combines procedural elements with interpersonal drama and centers around Sidney Strait, a killer corporate lawyer. In the pilot, Sidney returns to her estranged father's civil rights law firm after the death of her mother. Working alongside the sharply defined series regulars, Sidney takes on some very sticky cases with an admirable sense of purpose and fortitude. In spite of the positive elements about Bluff City Law, though, their ratings were ultimately not what NBC was expecting, considering a lead-in from The Voice. No further episodes have been ordered, but word is that the final decision will be made in the spring. In all likelihood, this engaging drama will not see a second season. 6. Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist a mid-season replacement and Hail Mary play for a hit, this show's unique premise revolves around Zoe, a programmer who gains the ability to hear people's innermost thoughts. The catch is that everyone expresses their thoughts in song, so it's some hellish musical hell. A hellish hell. A hellish musical hell. Yes. 
Brought to you by the likes of Paul Feig and Mandy Moore, this innovative show is supposed to fill the void left behind by Crazy Ex-Girlfriend and Glee. However, NBC's desperation to make this a hit is palpable. They ran the pilot a month early to encourage viewers to tune in during its usual Sunday night time slot. And they're also running YouTube ads wherein people can watch the entire episode for free just by not clicking on the skip ad button. Frankly, this tactic doesn't bode well for future success, but given how popular musical shows are, there is hope that its potential fan base will keep this interesting program running for at least one or two seasons. 5. Almost Family Shockingly, the premise for this show was ripped straight from the headlines. A fertility doctor, played by Timothy Hutton, used his own semen to impregnate 100 women. His daughter must now reconcile with the fact that the father she loves is a despicable criminal and that she has dozens of half-siblings. Almost Family was adapted from a short-lived Australian series called Sisters. Perhaps the American showrunners should have paid attention to the success, or lack thereof, of the original show, though. A program such as this would need a sharp sense of humour to counteract the off-putting nature of the premise. Almost Family, however, veers more towards the family drama genre and has thus been steadily losing whatever viewers it had. There is hope for a second season, but seeing as it airs on Fox and not ABC, the network will probably have more sharply entertaining fare with which to replace this creepy, sentimental mess. 4. Perfect Harmony you would think that any show that cast Bradley Whitford as its lead would be an automatic success. The man is a film and television staple, and vastly underrated. However, the success of Perfect Harmony, a musical comedy airing on NBC, started with middling ratings and has been on a steady decline ever since. Whitford plays a curmudgeon and former Princeton professor who takes on the role of moulding a small-town church choir. With the bright and charming Anna Camp serving as his foil, there seemed to be a lot of ripe territory for this show to cover. But alas, there wasn't, so we probably won't see it. Though this show has a lot of charm and humour, their premise didn't appeal to enough people and will most likely not return for a second season. One can only hope that Whitford and Camp find more popular material the next time around instead. 3. Bob Hart's Abishola CBS has a partnership and love affair with Chuck Lorre, the way ABC does with Shonda Rhimes. It seems there is no Chuck Lorre show CBS won't put into production and Bob Hart's Abishola is no exception to this rule. The show centers around Bob, a man so stressed he ends up in the hospital overseen by friendly Nigerian RN Abishola. Bob is immediately enchanted and pursues Abishola despite a complete lack of interest on her part. What a message! The first season follows Bob's pursuit of the disinterested Abishola and their ensuing romance. The comedy comes from their completely different backgrounds and the kind of cultural classes that are born from that. Though they attempted to make a tired premise feel fresh, the Chuck Lorre slash CBS brand of comedy prevented that from being the case. Interesting. Stale jokes and lackluster writing are abound, making this show a slog to get through. On any other network, this show would already be on its way to the sitcom graveyard, but knowing CBS's love affair with Lorre again, there is a chance that they will grant it a second season. We'll see. 2. American Housewife with such successes as Modern Family, Fresh Off the Boat, and Blackish, ABC thought American Housewife would fit nicely into its lineup. The show centers around Kate Otto, her family, and their lives as mere renters in the Westport, Connecticut area. What could have been another heightened, over the top sitcom has more or less flopped with its target audience, though. Though Katie Mixon, who plays Katie Otto, has been praised for her work on the show, critics have found that enduring an episode is a form of drudgery, and it would seem that audiences have agreed. Despite lower ratings than most of the shows on this list, American Housewife is on its fourth season. It's unclear why ABC is clinging to this dud, but it is likely that their goodwill has run out and American Housewife will not see another season. 1. The Flash When The Flash first premiered in 2014, it was the second most watched pilot in The CW's history. The fervor wasn't just fan hype either. The show was fun, engaging, and had a killer cast. Comic book aficionados and noobs alike agreed that Star Labs was the place to be. Now in its sixth season, though, The Flash is a shell of the show it used to be. As the series dragged on past its second season, it became progressively harder to watch. In spite of their best efforts to write themselves out of a corner time and time again, the retcons wore on loyal viewers. Tuning in became a chore, and one did so out of dedication. The ratings reflect this dip in quality and now put this once stellar show in danger of cancellation. As a mainstay of the CW and a major facet of the DC television universe, there is a chance for renewal that will more than likely be taken. But hey, perhaps Barry just needs some time off now. 
And that's our list. Which of these TV shows will you miss the most if they do go, and which do you think are not in danger of leaving at all? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I've been Ash, and this has been What Culture. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and come back again soon for some more lovely TV content. Thanks for watching.